The grace and peace of God our Father and the Lord Jesus Christ be with you. In the waters of baptism, Richard died with Christ and rose with him to new life. May he now share with him eternal glory. In life, Richard cherished the gospel of Christ. May Christ now greet him with these words of eternal life. Come, blessed of my Father. In baptism, Richard received the sign of the cross. May he now share in Christ's victory over sin and death. We come here to give thanks to God for Richard's life, but above all, to pray for him. And we pray too for Kitty, that she may be consoled in her grief and loss. Let us pray. O oh God, Almighty Father, our faith professes that your Son died and rose again. Mercifully grant that through this mystery, your servant Richard, who has fallen asleep in Christ, may rejoice to rise again through him who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, God for ever and ever. Amen. Please sit for the first reading. A reading from the Book of Wisdom. The virtuous man, though he die before his time, will find rest. Length of days is not what makes age honourable, nor number of years the true measure of life. Understanding this is man's grey hairs, untarnished life, this is ripe old age. He has sought to please God, so God has loved him. As he was living among sinners, he has been taken up. He has been carried off so that evil may not warp his understanding or treachery seduce his soul. For the fascination of evil throws good things into the shade and the whirlwind of desire corrupts a simple heart. Coming to perfection, in so short a while, he achieved long life. His soul being pleasing to the Lord, he has taken him quickly from the wickedness around him. Yet, people look on, uncomprehending. It does not enter their heads that grace and mercy await the chosen of the Lord and protection his holy ones. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. The response to the psalm, the Lord is my shepherd, there is nothing I shall want. The Lord is my shepherd, I shall not want. In verdant pastures he gives me repose. Besides restful waters he leads me. He refreshes my soul. Your the Lord is my shepherd, there is nothing I shall want. He guides me in right paths for his name's sake. Even though I walk in the dark valley, I fear no evil. For you are at my side, with your rod and your staff. That gives me courage. Your response? The Lord is my shepherd. There is nothing I shall want. You spread the table before me in the sight of my foes. You anoint my head with oil. My cup overflows. 
The Lord is my shepherd, there is nothing I shall want. Only goodness and kindness, kindness follows me all the days of my life, and I shall dwell in the house of the Lord for years to come. The response? The Lord is my shepherd, there is nothing I shall want. Please stand to greet the Gospel. Alleluia, alleluia. It is my Father's will, says the Lord, that I should lose nothing of all that he has given to me, and that I should raise it up on the last day. Alleluia. The Lord be with you. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to John. Jesus said, All that the Father gives me will come to me, and whoever comes to me I shall not turn him away, because I have come from heaven not to do my own will, but to do the will of the one who sent me. Now the will of him who sent me is that I should lose nothing of all that he has given to me, and that I should raise it up on the last day. Yes. It is my Father's will that whoever sees the Son and believes in him shall have eternal life, and that I shall raise him up on the last day. The Gospel of the Lord. Go. Do sit down. We've come together here, not just to talk about Richard, but to pray for him, because we believe that our prayer here will help Richard where he is now. As Catholics, we know that prayer is very powerful. We believe that we can help the departed by praying for them. That's why the best gift you can give to Richard is to pray for him. When we lay a wreath in someone's memory, the flowers will fade and wither and be thrown away. But the prayers we offer will never fade away. If you say just one Hail Mary for Richard, that will last into eternity because prayer has lasting value. Prayer is eternal. There are all sorts of things we do in our lives that in the light of eternity could be considered a waste of time. But prayer is never a waste of time. Jesus asked his disciples to do a very difficult thing, to retain their faith in God even when everything seemed against it. He did his best to prepare them for the crucifixion but they didn't really understand what was going on. They barely understood what was happening after the resurrection. It took time for them to really understand what Jesus had taught them and what his life and death meant. The promises of today's gospel have been fulfilled in and through Richard's life because this raising up on the last day which Jesus is talking about begins on what we might refer to as our own last day. Because we enter the eternal life he gives us when we're baptized. In baptism, we're joined with Jesus in his death. And having been joined to his death, we've also been joined to his resurrection. That's why the Easter candle of the resurrection is lit at every baptism and lit again for every funeral. Because our baptismal life is the first stage of eternal life. Jesus said, seek the kingdom of God first and everything else will be given to you as well. Because when we do that, when we seek the kingdom of God first, when we love the Lord our God with all our heart and soul, our mind and our strength, 
and our neighbour as ourselves, then we are on the way to the eternal life that Jesus offers. We're not wasting our time. Richard was a man of faith who sought the kingdom of God. I'm sure he will now be greeted with those welcoming words, well done, good and faithful servant, enter into the joy of your Lord. Faced with death, to many people, life seems absurd and meaningless. But our Christian faith tells us that despite death, life is not absurd, it's not meaningless. Because death is not the end, but a new beginning. Here we know we are simply travellers, only pilgrims on our journey through life, knowing that our final destiny is with God. That's why we need to keep our sight always fixed, not just on the outward appearances of this life, but on the fact that we were created by God, that we cannot be truly happy unless we live as God wishes us to live, and that God has a place prepared for each of us. We know God wants only what is good for us, and so we can keep our eyes fixed on the fact that our true destiny is eternal life, and not just death and oblivion. If we live in Christ and die in Christ, then we will rise again in Christ, and so I offer this prayer for Richard. May Christ, who was crucified and died for your sake, deliver you from eternal death. May Christ, Son of the living God, set you down in the fresh beauty of his paradise. And may he, the Good Shepherd, claim you as one of his flock. May he forgive you all your sins and grant you a place among his saints at his own right hand. There. May you ever behold your Redeemer face to face and ever stand before him. And may you delight in the vision of God for ever and ever. Amen. God, the Almighty Father, raised Christ his Son from the dead. With confidence we ask him to save all his people, living and dead. Dear Lord, in thanking you for the life of Richard, we ask that you accept the good things he has done, that those good things are an example for us, and that you may lead him in your mercy to eternal life. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Dear Lord, we pray for Auntie Kitty and all the family and friends of our brother Richard that they may be consoled in their grief by the Lord, who wept at the death of his friend Lazarus. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Dear Lord, in thanking you for the life of Richard, we ask you to accept the good things he has done, that those good things are, our, are an example for us, and that you may lead him in your mercy to eternal life. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Dear Lord, we pray for all those who cared for Richard at the end of his life and for all the healthcare professionals. May they always do their jobs with kind and gentle hands as your son Jesus taught us. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Dear Lord, we pray for all the members of our family and parish who are sick and suffering, physically or mentally, 
please bring them comfort and hope. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Dear Lord, we pray for all the deceased members of the Pereira and Fernandez families. May their souls and the souls of all the faithful departed rest in peace. Amen. Amen. We ask Our Lady for her intercession. Hail Mary, full of grace, the Lord is with thee. Blessed art thou among women, and blessed is the fruit of thy womb, Jesus. Holy Mary, Mother of God, pray, pray for, for us sinners, sinners now, now and at the hour of our death. Amen. O God, to whom mercy and forgiveness belong, hear our prayers on behalf of your servant Richard whom you have called out of this world, and because he put his hope and trust in you, command that he be carried safely home to heaven and come to enjoy your eternal reward. We ask this through Christ our Lord. Amen. And now as the gifts of bread and wine are brought to the altar, we sing the offertory hymn. you, Lord God of all creation, for through your goodness we have received the bread we offer you. Fruit of the earth and work of human hands, it will become for us the bread of life. Blessed be God. Blessed are you, Lord God of all creation, for through your goodness we have received the wine we offer you. Fruit of the vine and work of human hands, it will become 
our spiritual drink. Please stand. Pray, brothers and sisters, that my sacrifice and yours may be acceptable to God, the Almighty Father. As we humbly present to you these sacrificial offerings, O Lord, for the salvation of your servant Richard, we beseech your mercy that he who did not doubt your son to be a loving saviour may find in him a merciful judge who lives and reigns for ever and ever. Amen. The Lord be with you. And with your Lift up your hearts. Amen. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is, right and just. It is truly right and just. Our duty and our salvation always and everywhere to give you thanks. Lord, Holy Father, almighty and eternal God, through Christ our Lord, in him the hope of blessed resurrection has dawned, that those saddened by the certainty of dying might be consoled by the promise of immortality to come. Indeed, for your faithful Lord, life is changed, not ended, and when this earthly dwelling turns to dust, an eternal dwelling is made ready for them in heaven. And so with angels and archangels, with thrones and dominions and with all the hosts and powers of heaven, we sing the hymn of your glory as without end we acclaim. Holy, holy, holy Lord God of hosts, heaven and earth are full of your glory. Hosanna in the highest. Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. Hosanna in the highest. You are indeed holy, O Lord, and all you have created rightly gives you praise. For through your Son, our Lord Jesus Christ, by the power and working of the Holy Spirit, you give life to all things and make them holy, and you never cease to gather a people to yourself, so that from the rising of the sun to its setting, a pure sacrifice may be offered to your name. Therefore, O Lord, we humbly implore you, by the same Spirit, graciously make holy these gifts we have brought to you for consecration that they may become the body and blood of your Son, our Lord Jesus Christ, at whose command we celebrate these mysteries. For on the night he was betrayed, he himself took bread and, giving thanks, he said the blessing, broke the bread, and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and eat of it, for this is my body, which will be given up for you. In a similar way, when supper was ended, he took the chalice and giving you thanks, he said the blessing and gave the chalice to his disciples saying, take this all of you and drink from it for this is the chalice of my blood the blood of the new and eternal covenant which will be poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins do this in memory of me The mystery of faith. We proclaim your death, O Lord, and profess your resurrection until you come again. 
Therefore, O Lord, as we celebrate the memorial of the saving passion of your Son, his wondrous resurrection and ascension into heaven, and as we look forward to his second coming, we offer you in thanksgiving this holy and living sacrifice. Look, we pray upon the oblation of your church, and recognizing the sacrificial victim by whose death you will to reconcile us to yourself, grant that we who are nourished by the body and blood of your Son and filled with his Holy Spirit may become one body, one spirit in Christ. May he make of us an eternal offering to you so that we may obtain an inheritance with your elect, <coughs> especially with the most blessed Virgin Mary, Mother of God, with blessed Joseph, her spouse, with your blessed apostles and glorious martyrs, with Saint Edmund, Saint Richard, and with all the saints on whose constant intercession in your presence we rely for unfailing help. May this sacrifice of our reconciliation, we pray, O Lord, advance the peace and salvation of all the world. Be pleased to confirm in faith and charity your pilgrim church on earth with your servant Francis our Pope and Vincent our Bishop and his assistant bishops, the order of bishops, all the clergy and the entire people you have gained for your own. Listen graciously to the prayers of this family whom you have summoned before you. In your compassion, O merciful Father, gather to yourself all your children scattered throughout the world. Remember your servant Richard, whom you have called from this world to yourself. Grant that he who was united with your son in a death like his may also be one with him in his resurrection when from the earth he will raise up in the flesh those who have died and transform our lowly body after the pattern of his own glorious body to our departed brothers and sisters too and to all who were pleasing to you at their passing from this life give kind admittance to your kingdom there we hope to enjoy forever the fullness of your glory when you will wipe away every tear from our eyes, for seeing you, our God, as you are, we shall be like you for all the ages and praise you without end through Christ our Lord, through whom you bestow on the world all that is good. Through him and with him and in him, O God, almighty Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honour, is yours for ever and ever. Amen. At the Saviour's command and formed by divine teaching, we stand to say, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us and lead us not into temptation but deliver us from evil deliver us lord we pray from every evil graciously grant peace in our days that by the help of your mercy we may be always free from sin and safe from all distress as we await the blessed hope and the coming of our savior jesus christ for the kingdom, the power, and the glory are yours now and forever. Lord Jesus Christ, who said to your apostles, Peace I leave you, my peace I give you. Look not on our sins, but on the faith of your church, and graciously grant her peace and unity in accordance with your will, who live and reign forever and ever. Amen. The peace of the Lord be with you always. Let us offer each other the sign of peace. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world. Have mercy on us. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world. Have mercy on us. 
Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world. Grant us peace. May it make the body and blood of the Lord your body and blood of the Lord May the seed and body and blood of Jesus Christ not be made to drive into condemnation with the Lord of the Lord. Be to be protected by the body and the healing remedy. Behold the Lamb of God. Behold him who takes away the sins of the world. Blessed are those called to the supper of the Lamb. Lord, I am not worthy that you should enter under my roof, but only say the word and my soul shall be healed. Let perpetual light shine upon him with your saints forever, for you are merciful. Eternal rest grant unto him, O Lord, and let perpetual light shine upon him with your saints forever, for you are merciful. communicant members of the Catholic Church are welcome to receive communion. If you wish to come forward for a blessing, then please cross your arms and I'll know what you're asking for. The body of Christ. 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 Angels, 
Let us pray. Lord God, whose Son left us in the sacrament of his body, food for the journey, mercifully grant that, strengthened by it, our brother Richard may come to the eternal table of Christ, who lives and reigns for ever and ever. Amen. Please be seated as we hear a little about Richard's life. Good afternoon, Father Nigel Gershwin, our dear Catherine, all relations of Richard and Catherine who have come from abroad, all other relations who are with us today, and above all, to all our near and dear friends. To the ones who do not know me, my name is Donald D'Souza. I have been asked by Anita and Catherine 
to do the eulogy, I was honored to know and to believe that Catherine says to me that I must do it because I am the closest friend of Richard. It is true, we miss him daily. Richard was born, as you all know, on the 27th of August, 1931. Richard died on Thursday, the 26th of May, 2022. He lived in this world for 90 years, eight months, and 29 days. We have gathered here today to give a final farewell to our dearest friend, Richard. We have come here, we are talking about dying. What is exactly dying means? I remember reading this article by Kevin Mayhew some time back, and I wish to share it with you all. What is dying? It's like this. A ship sails, and we are standing watching the big ship till she fades on the horizon. And someone on our side says, she is gone. Gone where? Gone from our side. That is all. But she is just as large as when we saw her. The diminished size and the total loss of sight is only in us, not on the ship. And just at that moment, when someone my size says she is definitely gone, then there are others who are watching the ship coming, coming, and the other voice take up the glad shout, oh, there is ship comes. That is all it means dying. We have, my memory flies back the year 1970, when my wife Anne Marie first met Richard when he visited our home at Ealing with another friend of ours. Richard was helping her to send the parcel via India. I was at work. To talk about helping Richard wherever possible, he helped most of his friends at the airport with extra luggage with Air India. Richard always wanted to be nice to people. That was his way of life. If, if I had to say to Richard, oh Richard, could you please give me, even before I told him what I wanted, he already ended up saying, oh yes, I will give it to you. He was surely a good man with a heart of gold. But in 1994, we came, to, Twickenham, we came to, to live in Twickenham and we met Richard and Catherine at the church and gradually we became good friends. When Richard retired after a long service with Air India, one of the gifts he received was a free membership at casinos at the West End. Oh yes, he enjoyed that very much, going with Catherine. After the church, then they insisted we accompanied them. 
neither I nor my wife take any part in gambling. But I must say that complimentary food have always been very good. One of the occasions we remember well, at that 50th wedding anniversary, we took them for a high tea at the Reeds Hotel. We had a wonderfully nice, pleasant time. Oh yes, once, once of our, one of our visits to Goa, we stayed at the Goan Heritage Hotel in Kalingood. Most of y'all must be known about it. Richard often drove to visit us. The hotel was only about three minutes from the beach. This particular day, we decided to have a massage. I think, Rich, I think Richard had too much of oil on him. By the time we, I was finished, he was already swimming. As I just began to enter the water, I saw a big wave hit Richard and he tumbled under the wave. I ran to him. The first thing he said to me, Oh, Donald, I lost my gold ring. We, he had a very big gold ring. We looked all over, but we could not find it. We often visited Richard and Catherine at that Catherine's sister's place. I must say, they were very good entertainers. We had a lot of sing-song evening and plenty of delicious food and kajal, of course. In the later years, this is what I want to bring to y'all to note. In the later years, Richard and Catherine were quite interested in knowing Jesus. On his request, I gave him a Bible and guided him to read the living word of Jesus. I could see his eagerness to know more and more about Jesus, and he kept asking me many things in the Bible. I said to him, Jesus has said, I am going to my father. My father's house has plenty of rooms, and I'm going there to prepare a place for you all. Then I, then I will come and take you where I am. The Bible records Jesus has said 336 times, one for each day, including the leap year. Jesus said, do not be afraid, only believe all things are possible with God. For a believer, the end of the earth, end of life on earth is the beginning of a glorious life with Jesus in heaven. Think of this like this. Your last day on earth will be your best day ever. How awesome that is, experiencing the joy of heaven. God's prayers promise. All too often, as believers, we think we are waiting on God, when really God is waiting on us. We think whatever we think we are waiting on him to answer 
our prayers when he is waiting on us to realize he already has given to us he has supplied for us that has never been a race of mankind that didn't believe in some kind of future life whether it's reuniting with ancestors as some native american believe christ gave what the birthplace of an indestructible belief that death is vanished and there is life eternal simply this Christ's resurrection guarantees ours will you please join me as i pray for richard may the soul of our friend richard rest in the great love of our father god in the everlasting peace of our lord jesus christ and in the overflowing joy from god the holy spirit amen thank you for your patience Can you give me a hand? Thank you all for uh, making it today. Um, I just wanted to share. Uh, a few memories of my uncle richard uh richard parera was my mom's elder brother and uh, they were very close we affectionately called him uncle richie and he really had the most suitable name as he was very rich in love generosity kindness friendship and humor as a kid growing up i always thought santa claus lived in london as he would bring us our favorite chocolates candy and gifts every christmas uncle richie was born in the early 1930s in a modest and loving catholic family in bombay he was very fond and close to his mom and respected his dad he grew up in a family with nine siblings and joined the indian merchant navy to help out the family at a young age He was an adventurer at heart and took the opportunity to immigrate to the UK uh, as a young sailor. In fact, he was the first member of his family to travel abroad and settle abroad. And I always admired his attitude of adventure, self-confidence and living life to the fullest. Over time, he got a job at Air India. and spent a long career working on flight operations at Heathrow airport in the 60s he met his beautiful wife catherine who was a nurse then they fell in love and got married they supported each other lovingly through all the ups and downs over the years uncle richie was big hearted and would always try to help out his family and friends when in need every visit to india he would make it a point to visit all his siblings their families and got gifts for every one of them in fact he would borrow my dad's scooter for these trips and it was thrilling to ride in the back with him as a kid as he was a fun and sometimes wild rider over the years and during the pandemic i would regularly chat with him and Aunty Kathy on the phone from the US 
and it was always fun to joke about American politics with him, and especially Donald Trump. <laughs> when I bought my tickets to London, I was hoping to spend time with him this summer, but there were other plans. However, knowing him, I think here is how he would like to be remembered. I'd like the memory of me to be a happy one. I'd like to leave an afterglow of smiles when life is done. I'd like to leave an echo whispering softly down the ways of happy times and laughing times and bright and sunny days. I'd like the tears of those who grieve to dry before the sun of happy memories that I leave when life is done. Our brother Richard has fallen asleep in Christ. Confident in our hope of eternal life, let us commend him to the loving mercy of our Father and let our prayers go with him. He was adopted as God's son in baptism and was nourished at the table of the Lord. May he now inherit the promise of eternal life and take his place at the table of God's children in heaven. Let us pray also on our own behalf that we may one day go forth with our brother to meet the Lord of life when he appears in glory. I'm now going to sprinkle the coffin with holy water as a sign of Richard's baptism and then honour him with incense as a sign of our prayers rising to heaven. Saints of God, come to his aid. Come to meet him, angels of the Lord. Receive his soul and present him to God the Most High. May Christ who called you take you to himself. May angels lead you to Abraham's side. Receive his soul and present him to God the Most High. Rest eternal grant to him, O Lord, and let perpetual light shine upon him. May he rest in peace. Will you please stand? Into your hands, Father of mercies, we commend our brother Richard in the sure and certain hope that together with all who have died in Christ, he will rise with him on the last day. We give you thanks for the blessings which you bestowed upon Richard in this life. They are signs to us of your goodness and of our fellowship with the saints in Christ. Merciful Lord, Turn toward us and listen to our prayers. Open the gates of paradise to your servant and help us who remain to comfort one another with assurances of faith until we all meet in Christ and are with you and we are with our brother forever. We ask this through Christ our Lord. May the angels lead you into paradise. May the martyrs come to welcome you 
and take you to the holy city, the new and eternal Jerusalem. In peace, let us take Richard to his place of rest.